Hello NFL fans, welcome back to Touchdown Kingdom, your go-to channel for the latest NFL news and content. If you enjoy our videos, make sure to show your support by liking, commenting with your predictions, and subscribing, as we'll consistently bring you more exciting content like this. The division we will be going over today is the NFC South, which has been referred to by many as one of the worst divisions in football, but that means anybody can win it. Last season, three teams finished with a record of 7-10, while the Bucks were the lone team with eight wins, still having a losing record but winning the division. The Falcons and Panthers are young teams looking to improve and make the next step, while the Bucks and Saints are aging rosters that will be put into an odd position if they don't manage to do well this season, especially the Saints, after signing Derek Carr. Without further ado, we'll dive into the offseason moves of each team and give an overview of their team as a whole before revealing their record at the end of the video. The sponsor of today's video is BetUS. If you haven't heard of BetUS, they are one of the leading platforms for online betting, offering a wide range of sports betting and casino games. They have an incredible variety of betting options on a ton of different sports. You can do so much on BetUS, including pregame bets, parlays, live bets, and player prop bets. BetUS is offering a 125% sign-up bonus when you click the link in the description. For any questions, check out any of the BetUS customer support options through live chat, email, and phone support. So visit BetUS, sign up using the link in the description, and start betting on your favorite sports and games. Starting us off today is the team that held the number one pick in the draft, the Carolina Panthers. The Panthers made a huge move this offseason in trading up for the number one pick in order to get their quarterback of the future in Bryce Young. In this trade, they exchanged DJ Moore, the number nine pick this year, and a boatload of other future assets to secure who they believed was the best quarterback for their future. They also brought in Frank Reich as head coach to start the new regime in Carolina. Reich is known as an offensive guru, so hopefully he will be able to smoothly develop Bryce Young into the NFL. To surround Bryce, they added DJ Chark, Adam Thielen, and Miles Sanders in free agency, while adding Jonathan Mingo in the second round of the draft. On paper, they have a really talented defense and they added a new defensive coordinator in Ahiro Averro this offseason, who led the incredible Denver Broncos defense last season. With studs like J.C. Horn and Brian Burns, this defense could end up as a top 10 unit this season. They also have great talent in Frankie Louvu, Dante Jackson, Shaq Thompson, Derek Brown, and Jeremy Chin. Bryce Young was seen as the safest quarterback prospect in the draft and most likely he will pan out to be a good player, but for him to elevate to that next level, one of these Carolina receivers will have to break out to give Bryce a guy he can trust with the game on the line. In one of our latest videos for the award predictions, we predicted Frank Reich as the coach of the year, and if that happens, it is sure to come with this young Carolina offense and defense breaking out. The second team we'll be going over today is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The way the media has been talking about this team is crazy because the last three years they've won the Super Bowl and made the playoffs both years following. However, it is warranted. The GOAT of football, Tom Brady, just officially retired this offseason. And even with Tom, the Buccaneers only went 8-9 in the worst division in football to sneak into the playoffs before getting crushed in the wildcard round. The roster is aging, with their best offensive players in Mike Evans and Chris Godwin being 30 and 27 respectively when the season starts. And their best defensive players, Levante David and Shaq Barrett, are 33 and 30 respectively. While they do have other good, younger defensive players like Antoine Winfield, Jamel Dean, Devin White, and Carlton Davis, they've declined Devin White's fifth-year option, so who knows how long he's going to be in Tampa. The biggest talking point of the Bucs is the quarterback position, with Baker Mayfield and Kyle Trask fighting for that starting position. In 2023, that is not the ideal quarterback situation if you're trying to fight for another playoff spot with an aging roster. 
Even if they made the playoffs last season, they certainly did not look good doing it. Their defense was the 18th best in points allowed in a division with no truly great offenses, and their offense was 23rd in points scored. Outside of the draft, they really didn't do anything too greatly to improve their offense, and they had one good signing on defense, which was safety Ryan Neal to pair along with Antoine Winfield. While an improvement on the offense will be a healthy Tristan Wirfs, they traded away Shaq Mason and drafted Cody Mock, most likely to replace Mason. The Bucks are in a transition period, and it will be interesting to see how they perform with a similar roster without Tom Brady and a new offensive coordinator. The third team we'll discuss is the New Orleans Saints. Finishing with a mediocre record of 7-10, they made it apparent that they wanted to improve on their offensive play this season by signing veteran quarterback Derek Carr. Outside of signing Derek Carr, they made no other moves in the offseason that scream that they want to win with their current roster, which makes the move to give Derek Carr a four-year deal even more odd. They do have some offensive weapons, including Chris Olave, who probably would have won Offensive Rookie of the Year had he played all 17 games. They also have Michael Thomas if he plays, Juwan Johnson, deep threat Rashid Shahid, and Alvin Kamara. Last season, their offense was below average, and although Derek Carr is going to be better than Andy Dalton, I don't know if that's enough to catapult them into being a premier offense. Their defense last season was ranked within the top 10 in points allowed, but with their three best players being the aging Cam Jordan, Tyron Matthew, and Demario Davis, I'm not sure how much longer they'll be able to play at such a high level. They do have some other good players, including Pete Warner, Marshawn Lattimore, and Paulson Adebo, and drafted interior D lineman Brian Breezy out of Clemson, but I don't see them being within the top 10 once again with this unit. They signed Jamal Williams from the Lions and drafted Kendra Miller to help bolster the backfield and have an efficient committee backfield with Kamara still taking most of the passing work. While this team is certainly good enough to win some games, I just really wish that they took this offseason to unload for some younger pieces and get a younger quarterback to develop with young star wide receiver Chris Olave. The last team to go over is the Atlanta Falcons. If nothing else, the average NFL fan will have a blast watching this team run the ball down the hearts of the opposing defenses. If you like Smash Mouth football, that is what Arthur Smith and Bijan Robinson are going to give you. The Falcons are a good football team, and in a weak division, they would have been a playoff team maybe a decade ago. However, it's now a passing league, and they don't know if they have a quarterback. Desmond Ritter is going to be their starting quarterback next season, and he was drafted in the third round of the 2022 NFL Draft and only played the last four games for them, totaling 700 passing yards and just two touchdowns. A positive for Ritter is that he threw no interceptions during these first few games, which is something many new starters struggle with, including fellow rookie Kenny Pickett. While running the football was the identity of the Falcons last season, they doubled down on that this offseason by selecting Bijan Robinson with the 8th overall pick in the draft. Bijan is the highest drafted running back since Saquon Barkley back in 2018 and is going to be a major contributor for the Falcons right away. Last season, PFF ranked them with the 5th highest rushing grade, behind their number one ranked run blocking graded offensive line. Their offensive line is fantastic for both the run and pass, which will give Bijan the opportunity to explode in year one, as last year Tyler Algier, their 5th round pick, was able to run for over 5 yards per carry. The Falcons have some absolute dogs on the offensive line. Last season, Chris Lindstrom was undeniably a top two guard in football and solidified himself a five-year, $100 million deal with every cent deserved. On the outside, their tackles, Jake Matthews and Caleb McGarry are both very solid, and they just drafted another guard in Matt Bergeron out of Syracuse to be another mauler in the trenches. Drake London and Kyle Pitts are the Falcons' only true great receiving threats, but they are going to be a run-first team, and two great outside options should be all they need to run an efficient offense. If London and Pitts are able to stay healthy and Ritter performs at even an average level, they could both reach over 1,000 yards. Last season, they had an average defense. However, they added a top-five free safety in Jesse Bates, 
and a bunch of other pieces like Mike Hughes and Jeff Okuda, both from Detroit, Calais Campbell, Bud Dupree, and David Onyemata. This defense could certainly make the leap into the top 10 conversation during the season, and if Desmond Ritter is able to play as a good game-managing quarterback, this Falcons team could sneakily be very hard to beat with a great run game and a solid defense. Now for the record predictions. Unsurprisingly, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in last place with a record of 5 and 12. It'll be interesting to see what direction this franchise takes in the years after Brady, but for now, with Baker as the starting quarterback, it's hard to see them as a playoff contender unless he makes an unforeseen leap in year 7. These next three teams are incredibly hard to rank, and it all comes down to their divisional games against each other and the level their quarterbacks play at because we have yet to see them in action, so it would be unsurprising for any of these teams to win the division. But it is a ranking video, and we must, so... In third place, we have the New Orleans Saints at a record of 8-9. The Saints seem like an organization that refuses to accept the situation they're in after Drew Brees' retirement and will be in mediocrity until they realize they need to reset with a young quarterback. In second place, we have the Panthers at a record of 9-8, who may be able to sneak into the wild card under the play of number one pick Bryce Young and Frank Reich's offensive system. In first place, we have the Atlanta Falcons with a record of 10 and 7, winning the division and being a nightmare matchup in the playoffs for any team with a weak front seven. The top of this division is so hard to rank, so of course, if you disagree with any of the points made, feel free to leave a comment below and let us hear your thoughts, especially any Bucks fans who feel differently about the entire Baker situation or the direction of the team as a whole. This is just the fourth installment of the series, and we will have more coming weekly so make sure to check the channel for more videos just like this. If you enjoyed, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment any disagreements you may have or any of our predictions you agreed with. Thank you, and we'll see you next time at the Touchdown Kingdom.